All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. We understand your time is valuable, so we appreciate you spending some time with us. My name is Tim Begonis. I'm the CMO here at DTools. And uh, today we're going to uh, cover uh, how to shorten your sales cycle and really close more sales utilizing MobileQuote 2.0, which is a companion app for our system integrator platform. Uh, presenting today will be Randy Stearns, our CEO. And um, we just have a little bit of housekeeping and then we'll get right into it. So if you've attended a webinar with us before, it's pretty simple. Um, we will be presenting. Uh, you are all in um, listen mode. Um, but we do want you to uh, provide questions as we go. So there's a little questions area of your go to webinar control panel. Feel free to type in whatever questions you have along the way. Um, we will do our best to answer them as we go through the presentation um, in, in chat. And then there will be some time at the end for us to go through uh, and, and properly do the Q&A. Um, and if you need to see more of the screen um, in your control panel, there's a little arrow on the right, click that, and that will free up more of your screen to, um, to view the presentation. So what we're gonna cover today is, I'm gonna turn it over to Randy, and he's going to cover some um, common obstacles to sales, um, an overview of MobileQuote 2.0, um, how it works with SI and how it can help your business. Then we'll do a high level demo of MobileQuote, and then, like I said, we will turn it over and um, have time for Q&A at the end. So I'd like to introduce Randy Stearns, our CEO, and he will be taking you through the presentation. Thank you, Tim, and thank you, everyone out there, for joining us today. Um, I want to start out by uh, talking about why we ex built MobileQuote 2.0 in the first place and what business challenges it solved. I have uh, 20 years of industry experience as a systems integrator. I've done my share of sales and I've managed a sales team and um, believe that the process um, is kind of broken and there are more efficient ways to get uh, a contract signed than the way it's typically done today. And MobileQuote is an attempt to help you to do that. Um, so some of the challenges that we face is, you know, you get called out to a project uh, to meet with a client and you're engaged in a meeting with the client, having a nice conversation, talking about doing your needs assessment, uh, doing some education most likely, and discussing options that are available. And uh, during that conversation, you're doing your best to take some really good notes. But the truth of the matter is, you're scribbling down some stuff and it's sometimes hard to read. You sometimes forget to jot down certain things and your notes are incomplete. Um, at the end of that meeting, the client often asks the question, how much is this going to cost? And uh, unless it's a type of project you've done lots of times before, like a conference room or a um, classroom in a university uh, or a, a home in a particular development where they're all very similar, then you probably don't have a good answer to that question. You, you can uh, take a stab at it and then um, hope that you're close when the proposal is complete or, or worst case, build a system to that number, which is not the ideal way to build out a quote. Um, but more often than not, you, your answer to the question is, you know, I don't know exactly what it's gonna be until I do the system design. I'll get back to you within a couple of days or a couple of weeks. Um, and then you do get back to them with your proposal and uh, the client experiences sticker shock. It's often two times, three times, sometimes five times more than what they expected to spend. Um, so they send you packing uh, to do some value engineering and bring back the revised proposal. This can happen two or three times, um, which ends up um, taking a fair amount of time to do the proposals and the revisions. Uh, and extends the sales cycle to be weeks, if not months, and all the while opening the doors to competition to come in and um, try to get to the finish line before you do. MobileQuote solves all of these problems by giving you a tool through which you can take notes that are complete 
and detailed. Um, it will answer the question of price for you and for the client uh, in a very clear way and give a price range. Uh, it eliminates the need for revisions because you'll be presenting the uh, budget and um, scope of work to the client and they will approve it on your iPad um, in that very first meeting. So you should not need to do any proposal revisions because they've already accepted the scope and budget. Uh, the proposal time is shortened considerably because when you're done with that first meeting, the proposal is in essence 70 to 80% complete. You just need to finish out some details um, and it eliminates the competition in the process. Some of the other benefits of mobile quote is that it allows companies with multiple salespeople to create some consistency between salespeople in that the items that are made available to select from are standardized. So there'll be some standardization um, from one salesperson to the next. It eliminates design errors because the packages that are being selected are pre-engineered. Um, so there's no oversight. And also is a very subtle and even subconscious benefit um, when you generate a price on a computer, in this case an iPad, um, there's complete transparency and the client will trust that that's a fair price. Whereas if you go away and you do your magic off in some back room for a couple weeks and come back, they don't know whether to trust that price as being a fair price or the price that someone else would get. So you, you create some trust by having the information created right on the iPad. Um, so I'm going to just cover what mobile quote is and what mobile quote isn't. Um, it's a, as Tim mentioned, it's a companion iPad app for system integrator. It um, is a tool for developing project scope and budget. It facilitates discussions about solution options and budget considerations with the client, and it also creates an opportunity for salespeople to obtain a signed approval and collect a design retainer in the very first meeting. What it's not is SI on the iPad, and it's not a replacement for a full solution. In other words, proposals, drawings, project management. It's a front end, if you will, um, to SI and the sales process. So let's take a minute and I'll give you a quick overview um, of mobile, mobile Quote 2.0 and then we'll jump into a demonstration. You start with the quote setup, which I always recommend you doing prior to walking into your client meeting. And this is where you put in the client contact information, you um, identify the project type and some pricing rules that you're gonna use uh, you can set it, you can decide if you um, you know charge a retainer is probably calculated the same way for most of your projects um, when you do and you can also set some pricing parameters around the price range if you want it to fall within 10 percent or 15 percent um, so that can all be done ahead of time and i'm going to show you how to do that in a minute um, by using the templates uh, within si you can preset the rooms and systems that are standard by project type um, and then easily add and delete rooms and systems as you go. Um, you can even add room details and system details and site photos, and I'll show you how to do that. Then you add products in, uh, in the form of packages and allowances. I'm gonna explain the difference here um, when I get into the demonstration, but um, it's very quick and easy to add items to a design. Uh, you can add, even add items to multiple rooms simultaneously and you can adjust the price on the fly. The app will automatically calculate your quote totals and subtotals. It'll show by room, by show by system, and even equipment versus labor. You can uh, show a summary to the client um, in that those same formats. And then ultimately get client approval. Uh, we have e-signature capabilities and even the ability to collect a design retainer or contract deposit through your preferred mobile payments platform. So with that as a backdrop, I wanna um, explain a part of mobile quote that we're not gonna show you today, which is the setup in system integrator. 
um, there's a, a, a handful of things that you need to set up as um, kind of your uh, it, well let's let's say it this way um, if you set things up properly on the back end in SI then your use of mobile quote will be facilitated significantly and uh, a lot more valuable so the things that you want to set up in SI are your project types now these are templates where you can assign default locations default systems labor and tax rates you can set labor difficulty factors i'll show that to you um, retainer preferences in other words are you going to have retain charge a retainer design retainer or not and if so how will you calculate it um, and contingency percentages do you like to work with a 10 percent or 20 percent contingency or price range um, there's an opportunity to set meeting objectives um, which will go through the default ones, but you can set the approval language for each meeting objective. I'll give you an example of that. Um, importantly, you'll want to build packages um, and then select the items from your catalog that you want to share with MobileQuote. Uh, you don't need to use packages, you can use allowances only, um, but I think packages make it a more powerful solution. And then lastly, you can set pricing levels. We have a default uh, for pricing levels, but you can also set your own pricing levels and I'll um, cover that in the demo as well. So with that as our um, intro, I am going to take a minute here, please bear with me and switch over to my iPad. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is launch the mobile quote app. I get a splash page. And then I get a list of quotes. Now, the quotes are divided by active and archived. Okay, I'm seeing active quotes now. If I switch over to archived, I can see archived quotes. I can view my quotes by uh, alphabetically, by price, either, either ascending or descending, by modified date, which would typically be most recent first, or by status, which is approved versus pending. Um, I can also, um, in the upper right-hand corner, uh, where it says last sync, I can hit the sync button. And what that will do is sync with the SI server. It will pull information, uh, new templates that may have been created, new uh, catalog items or packages will sync back to my iPad. So I have the latest and greatest on the iPad. I can also um, select here to clone a quote, uh, hold on, let me go to active. I can open a quote, I can clone it, which is perfect when you are in a situation, let's say you're doing a bunch of conference rooms in a particular uh, office um, or campus or classrooms or homes, <coughs> excuse me, in a subdivision uh, where they're, they look similar, that's a good way to, way to use the cloning feature. I can archive my quotes, uh, I can rename, I can sync a quote with SI, like after I complete the meeting with the client and have the details, if I wanna sync it back to the server so that my engineer can start working on that proposal immediately and on that project immediately, I can sync it or I can delete it, okay? Um, so that's the opening screen and I'm gonna hit the plus in the upper right hand corner to start a new quote. I'm gonna go through five setup screens, which mostly will be done ahead of time and mostly will be done from a single summary page, which I'll show you in a minute. But for demonstration purposes, I like to go through the step-by-step -step process. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create a quote name. I'm gonna call this one Randy's Mountain Retreat. And then I'm gonna pick a theme. We have various commercial themes in here, uh, and we have residential themes. This is gonna be a home, so I'm gonna say pick the mountain theme, and I'll show you where that comes up in a minute. I can swipe left, or I can hit next to bring up the next screen. Okay, and this is where I enter the contact information. So the easiest way to enter contact information is simply hit the import button, 
and get to your contact, which should be here momentarily, uh -huh. and pull in all the information. The reason this is really valuable is if you work with a any sort of CRM, uh, CRMs almost all sync with Microsoft Outlook and with Google Contacts. So if your iPad syncs with Outlook or Contacts, which always syncs with one or the other, you can pull client information in from your CRM and it becomes your connector, if you will, or the integration between um, SI and a CRM program. I'll hit next. And so this allows me to pick a project type or template. I'm gonna pick one uh, labeled residential retrofit. It sets the sales tax, it sets the labor tax. I can put in a budget if I want, let's put in $60,000. And it sets the labor difficulty level. I can go in and change any of these. Um, I set a labor difficulty level of 130% because a retrofit project often requires a bit more work from a wiring perspective. Now, I can also set what we call the price or quality level. And I'm gonna stop, uh, pause here for a minute and explain um, a concept that I mentioned in the um, introduction that I want to get into in more detail. Within mobile quote, you have the ability to pull in two types of items. You can pull in packages or you can pull in allowances. A package is as you think about them now, if you're an SI user, in that it can be a you know eight camera system or an eight zone audio system. It can also be a in the case of mobile quote, a TV with a mount with labor and wire that gets you to a total installed price for that item, okay? An allowance, on the other hand, will look at your catalog and pull in all the items from a particular category or subcategory and assign a price based on the items in the catalog. So let's just say we choose flush mount speakers and you have in your catalog um, items ranging from 200 to $1,200. Uh, my good, better, best by default will set good at 400, better at 700, and best at 1,000, which is the 20 percentile, 50 percentile, 80 percentile of the 0 to 100 continuum. You can set those at anything you want. If you want to set them at 400, 800, and 1,200, you can do that, or you pick the numbers, but it defaults to 20, 50, and 80, okay? Um, I'm going to leave it at better for purposes of this quote. And then I'm going to go to defining my scope and meeting objective. When I select scope of work, it gives me a full editing screen. I have full editing capabilities here. Uh, I can use bullets, bold, uh, italics, you name it. And then I can enter this information in any, by using any method that's available to me on the iPad. In this case, I'm going to use the text to or the talk to text option with the microphone at the bottom. Design and install a distributed audio system, TVs in the family room and master bedroom, a lighting control system, a wireless network, and a camera on the back patio. Okay? So I've got my scope. Now, this particular field is going to appear in the email that you send to the client. So you might want to do some editing here, which is why we give you the editing capability. So in this case, I'm just going to go like this and find a bullet and, you know, quickly edit it, et cetera. I won't do the next couple. Uh, okay, but you get the point and format it so it looks nice. And then I'm gonna define the meeting objective, which we came up with four default meeting objectives. One is to simply define scope, which would be using mobile quote as a digital intake tool uh, or a note taking tool. It's for internal purposes. You're not gonna ask the client to approve anything. The second one is scope and budget approval. In other words, client, Mr. Client, is this look like the system design that meets your requirements and a, and a price range that's acceptable, and they approve it. The next one is a design retainer approval, approval if you're gonna charge them something for um, doing some design work. And then finally, a contract approval, which is if you get to a specific price and you wanna put that language in and, and use mobile quote to actually get a contract signed, which some people will do. I'm gonna choose design retainer approval. 
and I'm going to hit next. Um, and it gives me the ability to set that designer retainer. I can turn it off or turn it back on. I can set the designer retainer amount or contract deposit amount by a percentage of the project, a price per square foot, or a fixed amount. I'm going to just use a fixed amount and put in $1,500 as my designer retainer. I can also set the contingency, which is defaults to 10%. Based on the project type I selected, I can turn that off, which would make it not give me a budget range, but give me a, a specific price or leave it on, which will give me a budget range. And then I hit done, and I've completed my setup. And there's um, Randy's Mountain Retreat with a nice mountain-themed backdrop. The total appears as zero, zero, zero right now. Um, I told you you can enter the quote settings on a single screen. I'm going to hit that button on the upper right-hand hand corner that says quote settings. And here we have all the information I just entered all on one screen. Okay, so it makes it really easy to go in and fill this in um, yourself before you walk into the meeting all in one place without flipping through screens. Okay. So you'll see across the top a list of rooms um, here and down the side a list of systems. These are all default rooms and default systems that I had as part of the template for my residential retrofit project. Now, in this case, I've determined, you heard in my uh, scope description, that I'm not going to be doing all of this work on this project. I don't have a control and integration system, so I'm going to swipe left and delete that. I'm going to swipe left and delete motorized shades, climate control, and security. They're not needed today. In my list of rooms, um, I could do the same thing. Um, or, and I can also reorder them. I can grab office, for example, and move it over. Oops, and move it over. Okay, and reorder rooms easily. Um, it's important to note here that it, you see the highlighted add items button on the left hand side under the system names. Sometimes, and then I can switch my view. I, I just hit the systems button on the lower right hand corner which shows my systems across the top and rooms down the side. And here I can add items by room. This is important because sometimes you add items by room, like TVs and like speakers, and other times you add items by system, like in the case of a network or maybe lighting control components. So I want to give the ability to add items either way. It essentially creates a, a matrix or a grid to work from. So let's start adding items. I'll show you how quick and easy this is. If you want to check check your uh, watch here, it's a 126 uh, here on the East Coast. And I'll show you how quickly we can design a complete system and uh, slower than usual because I'm going to talk through it. Um, but normally you wouldn't need to do that. So if I go to audio, I'm going to add a uh, an eight zone audio system. I'm going to go to lighting control and add some packages that I have in here for radio raw components. Now, when I select one of these items, like this wireless keypad, my item detail comes up, and I can change the quantity. Let's change that to five. I have the ability to change the price. Let's say to uh, 300. I can uh, change the labor. I can make it, um, I can reset the price back to the original if I type something wrong. And if I want to make it owner furnished equipment and set the unit price to zero, I can do that. It shows my total. Um, and I can select good, better, best. I can also put a comment in here. Let's say, um, you know, place keypads in these rooms, right? Et cetera. And so I'm done with that. I'm going to set, uh, let's put in more than one dimmer. We'll put in 42 dimmers. Okay, and then I'm going to go down and add some network components. We'll add a managed switch and router package, and I'll add a WAP, um, maybe make that two WAPs. Okay, and this is my head-end equipment. That part is done. I'm going to switch the view and start adding equipment by rooms. So let's add some speakers. I'm in audio. If you see, look on the top, you can see audio is highlighted. So let's start with that. I'm going to add an in-wall speaker. Um, package to the living room. Now, if I press and hold there, I get a list of the rooms 
and I can go down and add a pair of speakers in the different rooms where I want to have that particular pair of speakers, okay, and they all populate. I'm adding packages so far. I want to show you how I can add um, an allowance. So if I go to speakers, and in the office, I'm going to put in a pair of bookshelf speakers, and now that is an allowance that's calculated in the manner that I described earlier. I'm going to say, let's make that uh, best quality. And I can, again, put a comment in as to where I want the speakers placed, and I'll hit done. And let's fill in the eighth zone, which will be some outdoor speakers, and make that of a good quality. And I've just added all the speakers. Now I'm going to go to video up on top, and I'm going to add a couple of TVs. Let's uh, add a 75-inch TV in the family room, and let's add a 55-inch TV in the master bedroom. And then I'm going to select video surveillance on top there and add a dome camera on the patio. And I have just completed my design. That took all of, uh, I count, three minutes. And I was explaining it to you. It's very quick and efficient. Um, it's a really valuable tool. You can do it while you're talking to your client. You don't need to have a sales engineer next to you um, working the iPad while you're having the conversation. Okay. Um, I'm going to show you one other feature here. There's a system details button in the upper right-hand corner. When I touch that, I'm in the audio system. It allows me to um, maybe say something I want to say about the audio system. And the other thing I can do is when I go to uh, the rooms view and select family room, for example, when I hit, when I hit room details, um, it allows me not only to make a note about that room, but I can also take a picture or a, make a video of that room if I want to just scan the room and have that recorded um, as part of the project, I can do that. Okay. Uh, and then I can go to summary, which this is at the point in time where I was put this iPad around and show the client where we're at. So in the system summary screen, I can view it by room or by system. Um, it shows on top my total by system, which is about 28,000 for the audio system, 13,000 for the lighting control system, et cetera. It's always going to be largest to smallest. And then it shows my breakdown by equipment and labor. And it shows my total by room. And then it shows equipment total on the bottom and a labor total and estimated taxes and then the project total with that 10% contingency. So it actually calculated 54,348. It adds a 10% contingency to give me a, a price range. If I want to see more detail than what I'm showing now, I can hit the caret next to rooms and expand the view, and it will give me a detail of what's in each room. And this is good for going through with the client saying, okay, let's make sure we got everything on a room by room basis. You might want to check to make sure you have everything from a design perspective on a system by system basis. So I select by system and then I scroll down and I say, okay, let's look at the audio system and make sure that looks like we got everything we need, video, lighting control, et cetera. And if everything looks good, you simply hit approve quote. Um, the client hand this to the client, let them read the language that you put in there for approval. I'll read through this real quickly. It says the undersigned agrees to the scope of work defined today, meets the requirements for this project, and that the project estimate is acceptable, and further approves a $1,500 design retainer for your company to proceed with the development of a fully engineered system design with the understanding that the final price quote will be within the price range shown. All right, short and sweet. Client says, sounds good to me, signs, and hits approve. Now, the next thing we'll want to do is um, send an email to the client um, with this summary. So I'm going to hit send email. It, I have some prearranged language, which you would create for your purposes with your company. Um, it's going to go out to, it's going to go to my email address, which I set it to so I can show you that email coming in. And then there's a PDF of the quote that was created. I'll hit send. All right, and then I'm going to save and close here. Um, before I show you that email, and while I give it time to come through, 
I can, I'm also going to show you how I would sync this quote back to my SI server. If I simply say sync with SI, it's syncing the quote, and it's been sent, and it's set complete. Okay, so now I am going to um, go to my email. Let's see the screen so you can see it. Um, so here's the email that it sent. And I'll double click on the attachment. And there's the estimate that was sent over. It has your logo. It's presented to uh, me with this project name. There's my project summary. This is the scope of work we wrote out. Got a breakdown by system, by room or area. Here's the totals, equipment, labor, taxes. Here's a pricing range to give you a contingency. And the design retainer amount, here's the language that the client approved and their signature. And that's it. So that's the end of the um, demonstration proper. Um, hopefully you'll see that uh, this tool solves a lot of problems that um, folks have in the field when they're dealing with their clients. It's, um, you know, really gets to, to a point of getting to approval quickly and, say, you know, saves a lot of time, eliminates the competition, uh, prevents the need for revisions, and shortens the proposal generation process uh, pretty significantly.